Hi guys. Um, I am going to make a vinaigrette for you guys today. Um, I basically asked you if you'd rather have more food or more kind of design and styling and basically the answer was both. So um, here I am today, I'm gonna to make um, a pretty basic lemon vinaigrette for you guys that you can use on a variety of salads. Um, any salads, any greens, any roasted veg or grilled vegetables, this would be amazing on. Um, it's essentially just lemon, champagne vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, um, Dijon mustard, garlic, um, salt and pepper. It's pretty easy. Um, however, what I really love about this particular kind of recipe is that it's a larger batch of the vinaigrette and you can then take it and break it into thirds and essentially adapt it and add things to it to change the flavor profile. So I'm going to take the second third and I'm going to add Pecorino Romano cheese because there is a romaine salad in Cook Beautiful that I really love with this Pecorino vinaigrette. Um, and then the last third, I'm actually going to add tahini, a little Aleppo pepper to give it just a touch of spice and a little bit of honey to give it a little bit of sweetness. And I'm going to use that on a kale salad because the darker, leafier, heartier greens um, pair really well with this kind of stronger um, nutty profile from the tahini in the dressing. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more unique. I just, I, I think that it's really important to kind of have a base recipe, something that you can keep in your fridge for upwards of two weeks if it's stored properly. And then you can add and adapt it to suit your needs. And there's no reason ever really to buy a pre-made dressing because this is so simple and I'm gonna take you through the process right now. So this can easily be done just with a whisk in a bowl, but I really love to make it in this mini Cuisinart. But I am going to basically combine my lemon juice and my champagne vinegar. I am going to put about a third of each. So one third lemon juice, one third apple cider vinegar, and then I'm also going to put Dijon mustard. So I'm eyeballing this right now, but of course, feel free to properly measure. I went and fished out all of the pits that were inside of my lemon juice because I was being lazy. So about one and a half teaspoons Dijon mustard, about one and a half cup of extra virgin olive oil, about a teaspoon of kosher salt and fresh black pepper. So I kind of eyeballed this, but I will share the exact recipe for you. It's so perfect. How simple was that? It literally took no time at all. I'm just gonna put a bit more olive oil, a bit more salt and pepper. And this is like a really good opportunity to share with you that always taste as you are making anything because even though I'll share the exact recipe, your taste buds might crave something different than mine. Perfectly lemony and zippy and emulsified. You get to hear Victor DJ as I kind of mess around with these vinaigrettes. This is the simple vinaigrette. I actually realized that I forgot to add the garlic when I was blitzing this in the mini food prep. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you take a small clove of garlic, you put it in a um, mortal and pestle, and you add some salt. The salt helps break down the garlic and turn it into a paste. Because the one thing that you do not want in a vinaigrette is a chunk of garlic. You want it to be completely dispersed, which is why I really love to either use a microplane to get really fine bits of garlic or to put it in that mini food prep. But since I forgot, this is how I'm going to create that pasty texture so you don't have a chunk of garlic in your vinaigrette. So you'll see it's like almost completely dissipated. Um, I have already, broken up the vinaigrette into thirds. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of this paste, just this much. 
What I have here is roasted beets. I roasted them the other day. Basically just scrubbed them clean, took off the leafy greens, put them in tin foil, drizzled them with uh, olive oil, salt and pepper, sealed up the packet, put it on a sheet pan and popped them in a 400 degree oven for uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, you don't even peel, need to peel them. You'll see what I'm doing right now is just pinching the skin like so. And then that takes um, the skin off. So it's a super low lift, really easy. These have actually been sitting in my refrigerator for a couple of days, so they hold up really well. So I am going to cut these beets up. I am going to drizzle some of our simple lemon vinaigrette, put some um, feta cheese, maybe a little bit of duca, um, and some fresh dill, salt and pepper, and have a late afternoon snack. Now I have that second third of our classic vinaigrette and some pecorino and some romaine lettuce. I have a microplane here and basically I am just gonna put a whole slew of pecorino romano cheese into that vinaigrette. So it's just gonna add a little bit of that sharp pecorino flavor. Okay guys, here is our final adapted dressing. Here's our basic vinaigrette, the base. I'm gonna add some tahini to it, a tablespoon or so. It's my favorite tahini, by the way. It's from Seed and Mill and they're based in New York and it's super delicious. Some honey, around a teaspoon and some Aleppo pepper to just give it some subtle heat. Both the honey and the tahini are kind of thicker. So I'm gonna use a whisk. Mm, it's so good, it's super subtle. All of these dressings offer just a little bit of a subtlety in their differences. All right, I'm gonna chop up the kale. All right, so here I have Tuscan kale or dinosaur kale. There's lots of different names for it. But I am essentially going to take these inner ribs out because they're super tough. Pinch the ends, put the spine in between your finger, and then just pull downward. And then that inner spine that's too tough to eat gets pulled away. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these kale leaves and I'm gonna stack a bunch of them and I'm gonna fold them in half. And the thing is with this kale is that some people massage their kale because it can be really tough. I think a better way if you have the knife skills is to just slice it super, super, super thin, as thin as you can so that it doesn't have that much of a bite. Honey crisp apple here. I'll cut it into slices. I'm gonna cut it into strips. 